I have been following the recent set of videos Regiman has done on his voice activated artillery script. It's really cool and you can go and check it out on his channel. Anyway, we were talking the other day and he was discussing how he wanted stuff to happen in game by activating a set of states with key presses. The collected set of key presses would then make Arma do a specific thing. I got completely hooked on it and got to work on a variant of his idea to try and reduce the amount of needed keys to a minimum. I am going to try and explain that idea here and it's going to get a bit technical, but bear with me, I'll try and stick to the general idea of it rather than the code side of things. To be honest, I probably shouldn't talk about code too much anyway. I'm sure half of what's in here is what coders learn not to do on day one in programming class. Anywho, the basic idea here is that we want to make code happen in-game by activating it with a voice command. For voice commands, I'm using voice attack as always. It's gotten to be my jam by this point. The problem is that without a proper voice attack plugin, all we can do is send key presses to the game. There's no way of sending a piece of code directly to Arma that it can execute. On the positive side, if that's our restriction, then really any modifiable voice interface program can actually be used for the methods I will be describing here. So to make stuff happen in-game, there need to be an Arma script running in the background that can listen for key presses and execute predefined code that does what we need. I've put a mod like that together that listens for only three keys. I can make it work with just one if I really want, but for now we're looking at three keys on the keyboard that are reserved for this purpose. The idea here is to make voice attack pass them to Arma in a specific order to form a code. When a code is detected, the mod will look through a list to find whatever piece of script is associated with that specific code and then execute it. So. Let's say we have a 1, a 0, and a pulse key. Now, we want to form a code, so let's say the code is 0, 0, 1. Now, to let the mod know where the code begins and where it ends, we have a pulse key. So, pulse, which means a code is now coming, get ready to listen. Then the actual input, 0, 0, 1. And finally, a pulse key again. That tells the script that we are done sending our code. Now the script can go and execute the function that our code is associated with by picking it from that list. Looking at that list, we find 001, which is associated with a function called load settings. In programming, that means we execute the function by calling it. Now to look where the function is defined, we have load settings right there, so Let's make the function actually do something between those two brackets. Maybe something like writing text to system chat. We'll do system chat and load settings seems appropriate. Save that. Now to go into voice attack and make a command that can send 001 to Arma and make our new script get executed. Looking in here, we'll find stuff that I've already created. Anyone that have looked into speakeasy will recognize the setup here. Um, let's duplicate one of the existing commands and make it into our new command, which will be load settings. And the spoken phrase should be load settings. The actual key presses will be 001. So going through it, we'll find the pulse key first. And we change the input sequence to 001. Like that, 001. After that, voice attack will send a pulse key again. All right, change the description to something more correct. We go OK, done, move over here. Right, with all that, we now want to send the input keys from voice attack to Arma by execute the voice command. Load settings. And at the lower left, we can see that our word got printed out and the code says load settings. That means our function fired. 
The whole point of this whole exercise is that I've only used three keys on the keyboard to execute a command from a list that contains way more than three commands. Meaning, with this sort of system, you won't run out of keybinds. In fact, you don't even have to bother with keybinds for voice control. Here's why it's a big deal for me. With Speakeasy, AK and I support a certain set of mods and have found keybinds for as many mod functions as we can without them conflicting. We ran out of keybinds ages ago. This could be a way of working around that. Now, the best way to deal with all of this is still to get a voice attack plugin together that can make Arma and voice attack talk to each other to execute code directly and exchange information to just to make things more dynamic. That is the holy grail, but I still haven't gotten that deep into coding to make it happen just yet. It also comes with its own set of practical problems that I won't get into here. I'll instead quickly talk a little about why I use the pulse key instead of just one or two keys. The reason is that one-way communication drawback with voice attack type interfaces that can only send key presses, not receive information. Without the pulse key, I need the timing and pauses to work between voice attack and arma. That adds to input time and potential transfer errors. The pulse basically removes the need to keep track of timing and to wait for input. Speed is key here. To make everything feel responsive, I want to send as short of a key sequence as I can. With only ones and zeros, you can only arrange them in so many unique ways. If my sequence is only one digit, I can only associate two different functions. One for one function, zero for another function. With two digit sequences, or two bit words, which is the term for binary sequences as far as I understand, it's the naming I use in scripts anyway. So with two bit words, you can arrange that in four different ways. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. You can associate those with four different functions, one for each. With three bit words, you double that to eight different functions. Four bit words double again to 16 and so on. So if I want more than 256 different functions to call, I either have to use words that are longer than 8 bits, or I use all the different word lengths up to 8 bits to get a total of 510 possible words. Speakeasy would need about a thousand, so even that wouldn't be enough. Imagine voice attack having to press 12 keys for each command, including the pulse key, twice. That is what is required to get to 1024 possible functions and it will make the system way slower. I could start using tertiary words instead of binary words, which would add a third bit type so that a word could look like 0, 1, 2. That would dramatically increase the number of short words, but is also more complicated to do and requires another key. Therefore, I have chosen to let the word size grow as needed for now. Sorry, that did get quite complicated after all. So, what now? I don't know, to be honest. Basically, we can make whatever script we want happen with voice, but I haven't quite found the killer application yet. Riggs has, though. I mean, seriously, listening to him give immersive voiced orders for an artillery battery is just bonkers. It could be an entire minigame for frog snacks. Imagine making an air traffic controller mod based on voice attack and this type of system. Mm hmm. Anyway, I hope some of this stuff made sense. Or at least that I got the point across that voice can execute whatever script is needed without using more than a minimum number of bound keys. That's it. We'll have to see where it goes from here. So stay cool, keep warm. <laughs>